Greetings fellow gardeners. This video is a winter gardening guide for severe winter storms. For context, depending on how far in the future you're watching this video, on February 15, 2021, Texas was hit by winter storm Uri, which caused severe statewide power outages, bringing the coldest weather we've seen in 30 years. Here in Austin, we got in inches of snow, back-to-back -back single digits, and it was below freezing for a whole week. The purpose of this video is to show you how I went from this to this. And how I went from one of the most brutal winters we've seen in a long time to one of the most beautiful springs we've seen in a long time. Back to February 15th. After the snow melted, the resulting deep freeze damage was unlike any I've ever seen. My wife and I started driving around town and noticing that cactus, agave, and any type of tropical plant had practically melted from the deep freeze damage. I made a video about that on March 1st, but I wanted to wait a sufficient amount of time before posting a frost protection video to see the full extent of the damage and my home. For this video, I'm going to be discussing my front yard vegetable garden, where I was growing tomatoes and jalapenos, my apple tree, which I planted in January of 2021, and my olive tree, which I planted last spring and have done an olive harvest video with. I'm also going to be discussing my fig tree and some of the wildflowers that I've been growing, which I recently made a video on. And in my backyard, I'm going to be talking about my winter garden, where I'm growing celery, cabbage, cauliflower, and a peach tree, as well as my larger peach tree bed. So I just want to start off by mentioning that using my frost protection tips, everything survived except my tomatoes and jalapenos, which would have required a miracle. In the backyard, some of these hardier vegetables have frost tolerances of around 28 or 26 degrees, and my peach tree has a frost tolerance of down to 15 degrees, but everything seemed to weather even the eight degrees back to back. I also want to note that after the snow melted, my apple tree lost all of its leaves and went dormant again before putting out new leaves, and my olive tree is kind of played dead. It turned brown and shed all of its leaves, which is a perfect example of a tree that appears it's going to die, but here we are two months later and it is growing back from its roots. So the format for this video is going to be me recapping the events leading up to the storm, that's February 10th to February 14th, the frost protection steps that I employed at that time, the storm itself, February 15th to February 19th, and then the two months that follow. So this all starts on February the 10th. That's when I first started to notice that a big storm was coming. We started seeing single digits in the Weather Channel app, and also we were seeing on the news that we needed to prepare for a storm. So today's February the 11th, and we basically have a total disaster on our hands. The rain that we got today, which was supposed to be rain, is freezing rain. So our tomatoes are coated in a thick layer of ice. Like that whole thing is frozen. Um, I think we can basically say this is a graveyard in the making. Didn't have a chance to cover my plants. I've been working all day and I thought this was just normal rain. And like even our apple tree over here, which is probably fine. Nice. Maybe, <laughs> maybe it's not. Um, I mean, listen to that. It's not a good sound. Oh, geez. So this was obviously my first mistake and a really big one on my part. It turns out that snow isn't as damaging as most people might think, but allowing ice to be in direct contact with your fruits and vegetables for a long time definitely is. As you can see here, my wildflowers were also coated with a pretty heavy layer of freezing rain, and so while I wasn't able to cover them initially, I pretty promptly got covers on them. 
So I've got to really stand by the door to record audio on this because of how windy it is. But it's Valentine's Day at noon. We're enjoying some freezing rain and 25 degree weather. And these are the coverings that I've employed to try to keep the plants safe as we drop down into single digits in the next couple of days. So I'm gonna step out here, might have to redub the audio for this, depending on the wind, but you can see the amount of ice that is just caked on everything. I've kind of ran out of covering, so I've had to get creative. And I'm using these drop cloths and plastic coverings with burlap and bubble wrap to try to keep the fig tree and the olive tree safe. And I've wrapped our apple tree here in bubble wrap. So for some additional clarification, in my first garden frost protection video, I explained how I've used bubble wrap and burlap to wrap my fig tree and my olive tree to protect them from the first frost of the year. Now, the burlap that I'm using is something called a blanket. It's just a breathable fabric. And in addition to those two things, I had also used a drop cloth that I used to move and just a piece of plastic to help insulate the fig tree and the olive tree. Additionally, I wrapped the tomatoes and the jalapenos, but as you can see from this list of their frost tolerances, there's really not much you can do when you're going all the way down to eight degrees. I mean, it's not really even raining now. There's just a lot of frost accumulating on everything. And obviously our wildflowers, I'm hoping this plastic tarp kind of makes a kind of greenhouse. I'm thinking I'm gonna get some water bottles and fill them up with hot water. And I'm almost about to slip and bust my butt out here. This, uh, the sidewalk is frozen. So I'm gonna go inside and be careful, but I may fill up some water bottles with hot water and put them underneath those drop cloths and tarps to kind of do a bit of a greenhouse type situation. But stay tuned, we should be getting some snow tonight. So let's see what happens. And obviously on the morning of February the 15th, we woke up to this. Well, I don't know about the fig tree or the apple tree, but I think my plastic covering on the olive tree is working perfectly. So even though it's like 12 degrees and there's all this snow and ice everywhere, I can see water vapor on the inside of the tarp. And let me get the right angle. Yeah, I think it's working like a little greenhouse there. Fingers crossed. So we got eight inches of snow and I've wrapped up our apple tree, tried to cover the branches and the base here as much as possible. It was nine degrees this morning and it's 12 degrees right now. I think when it warms up, we'll see that our apple tree hasn't dropped all of its leaves yet, but here's hoping. So I decided to wait an hour before filming in the backyard because there wasn't really a lot of light back here. But as you can see, very, very Colorado-esque. This is my winter garden and it is buried. You can see a little bit of my bubble wrap protection sticking out there. And thankfully I put this nice, uh, this nice uh, drop cloth covering on everything as a double layer of insulation. I'm gonna do a winter garden frost protection video, part three here in a little bit that explains the recent freezing rain. And now I guess the surprise eight inches of snow. This is our peach tree here. And during the last snow in January, it barely covered the base of the tree. But uh, here's what we're working with today. I mean, <laughs> absolute insanity. day two. Thankfully, most of our snow's melted. Some people are even driving around, but there's still a ton. The snow's been melting on my roof and turning my holly here and part of my little palm tree into an ice sculpture and killing it. Our bushes are still caked in snow and our garden is still layered with snow, which many people have told me is a great insulator. So this actually isn't too bad of a thing. Gotta be super careful where I step because there's a lot of ice here now. 
super dangerous to go out because these footprints are turning into really slick ice. See my car's got some gigantic icicles hanging off the bottom of it. And our coverings, I think, work pretty well. Our drop cloth looks like it's protecting our fig tree here. You can kind of start to see the soil underneath our apple tree. Which I'm it'll pull through and I'm really pleased with the way the olive tree turned out. I think it needed the most care. And this tarp that's over it seems to really be working like a nice little greenhouse. Looks great. Day three. So we got a whole bunch of freezing rain last night and kind of see that with these bushes here that are layered in this. I'm definitely gonna have to redub the audio on this because it's so windy, but this is our garden. See the freezing rain is really taking a toll and everything is still buried for the most part. Our plants which were wrapped are caked nice and uh, probably dead. Thankfully the fig tree and the olive tree are probably doing okay but I can see our apple tree is um, I don't know if I can even do anything about this. This feels incredibly unsafe. I can't even walk out there to get it. I might get a broom and try to knock some of that that ice off but I can't even walk out here. This is just hard ice. Yikes. There's our snowman, he's doing cool though. I am so pleased with the way this greenhouse turned out. As you can hear from that falling ice over here, we had a ton of freezing rain and it's kind of hard to see at a surface glance. If I get up real close here, this whole thing is covered in ice, but there's still water droplets on the inside, keeping our olive tree warm. I think it's gonna turn out okay. It's crazy. Day four. Thankfully, everything is starting to melt. You can see we've been listening to icicles crashing all morning, falling off the side of the house. And our garden bed is still frozen, as are many of our bushes still caked in ice. But the ground here is dry. Things really are melting. The high for tomorrow is 40. So fingers crossed that this all melts really soon. Once all the snow melted, it didn't take long to see that spring was finally here for good. I think this clip from one of my previous videos about frost damage aftermath best explains what I found in my home garden once everything thawed out. So cutting back to my home garden, the frost damage is pretty real. I never really expected my tomatoes and jalapenos to survive single digit temperatures and that's my basil there, it's just a brown stick now, but nothing really made it through. I left one tomato on my tomato vine just to see what the impact of single digit temperatures would be and it turned into this kind of liquefied zombie tomato. I'm going to try to cut those back and see if they pull through. Additionally, my olive tree is almost completely brown and thankfully dropping its leaves so it's likely not dead. You can see one branch is still retaining a little bit of that olive greenness while the rest looks pretty seriously damaged. So as depressing as some of this video might be, not all is lost. I removed the covering from my backyard garden bed which was caked in a pretty significant amount of freezing rain, snow, melted and refrozen snow and so a lot of weight on my vegetable garden. And thankfully, my cabbages and cauliflower and celery all look great. It looks like they pulled through pretty well. And additionally, my peach tree is 
putting out its first blooms of the spring. So that's a huge win. As of February the 28th, I started seeing these little green buds popping up all over my tree. My larger peach tree is green as well, so. So we're out back and everything looks like it's doing pretty well. As you can kind of tell, our peach tree is a little crooked. I think just the drop cloth on top of it got really heavy with the freezing rain. But the cabbage and cauliflower look great. I mean, they look hardly impacted. I think they should be ready to harvest in about a month or two. And likewise, the celery looks pretty good too. I'm gonna use some rubber bands or something to kind of band these together, but um, though the switch charge took some damage, the rest of everything looks fine. And our peach tree over here, of course, I won't be able to tell how it's doing until it actually begins to bloom. Thankfully, it didn't bloom before the freeze, so it should be okay. But our blue bonnets around the base here all look great. Super low impact, it looks like. And I thought this was kind of interesting, but I also noticed some natural erosion. These limestone bricks I'm using around the sides here from all the freezing and snow and stuff are kind of uh, coming undone, you know? So I thought that was kind of cool. Anyway, I'll do an update in I don't know, a few days, maybe a week or so, and see what bounces back. This next part is really just a testament to the hardiness of my peach tree. On February the 28th, I did some much needed pruning, and I'll remind you guys that this peach tree was never really covered. I did put some bubble wrap down over the blue bonnets in the base of the peach tree, but the larger tree itself just kind of weathered the storm. I think this is evidence that there's a lot of varieties of Texas peaches, and for the record, I don't really know what variety this larger tree is, that can weather stuff, even like this historic winter storm. Around March 4th, it also became evident to me that everything we had done to rescue the basil, the tomatoes, and the jalapenos had failed, which, as I mentioned previously, I don't really consider a loss. This historic storm was honestly pretty crazy, and trying to save stuff like tomatoes or jalapenos, I really don't think could be accomplished with bubble wrap and burlap. If I really wanted to save these, what I should have done was just dug them up and potted them, and hoped they'd be okay inside for a little bit, but at the end of the day, I just decided to cut them back and make space for some new plants. I also wanted to take a chance to talk about some of the winter vegetables which thrived during the winter storm. Back in January, I planted some green onions and I didn't even cover them during the winter storm. It turns out they're doing great and are super healthy to this day. Also back in January, while making a shepherd's pie, I discovered that some of my peas had sprouted, so I just planted them in my vegetable bed. They got buried under the snow, and it wasn't until mid-March that I discovered they had actually already produced strings of peas. About a month after the storm, I could tell that my olive tree was still alive because it had dropped all of its leaves. If the tree doesn't drop its leaves, that might be a sign that it is actually dead. And when I was cutting into it, I could see green wood underneath, and if I scratched the bark at the base, I could still see green in there, so I decided to prune it back quite a bit, and I'm gonna let my wildflower video tell the rest of the story for the recovery in the front yard. It was around March 12th when I first noticed how much the wildflowers were growing around the fig tree. Thankfully, the fig tree pulled through the winter storm, and I thought these wildflowers were about finished growing, but March 12th is really when they hit their stride. Within the next couple of weeks, they would grow about an additional two feet. So there is a fig tree at the bottom of this bed. It's hard to see, it's more apparent if You've seen the previous part of the video where the bed was more empty, but it's there. And I think, I, I don't know if it's being choked out, like losing water or losing sunlight because of how tall these wildflowers are. If I back up here for a second and crouch down, man, those are like three feet tall, like maybe three and a half feet. They're pretty big. 
but I love the blue bonnets that grew. Blue bonnets are obviously the state flower of Texas, and I think they're super beautiful. And down here at the base of our olive tree, you can see how much new growth there's been after the winter storm. So this is probably good evidence if your trees look like they're dead or dying. New life can be found, and clearly, down here by our olive tree, that's what we're seeing. On April the 9th, I uploaded a garden tour video where I walked around my front and backyard and just talked about everything that's still growing. In that video, I pointed out that my peach tree was just beginning to put out fruit, and I also mentioned that I removed my Swiss chard and planted some spring veggies in its place. So there you have it, folks. It's been a long and a really cold winter, but using bubble wrap, burlap, drop cloths, and plastic tarps, I've been able to pull through all my fruit trees and most of my vegetables through this historic winter storm. Let me know in the comments if you have any tips and tricks that can be used to get fruit trees, vegetables, or even wildflower beds through winter storms like this one. So for some final bonus footage, today's April 15th and I'm doing the editing for this video. And I figured I'd head over to my friend's house, Karen Jacob, who own these fruit trees. There are two peach trees, two tangerine trees, a lemon tree, and two banana trees. Now, Karen Jacob didn't employ any type of coverings for their fruit trees, but they still turned out wonderfully. As you can see, this peach tree is very healthy, and its fruit is much larger and much more numerous than my own. The peach tree itself is probably just a bit more robust, but also more mature, and I think it'll be super exciting to see the amount and quality of the fruit that this tree puts out this spring. One thing that's worth mentioning in comparing this larger peach tree to its brother on the right over here, which is obviously looking a lot less healthy, a lot more sparse foliage, is that this peach tree on the right put out its blooms before February 15th. So when the winter storm came, it killed them all. And there's really only one tiny piece of fruit on the smaller peach tree. But whereas the peach tree on the left had put out its blooms after the winter storm, so I think it turned out a lot more healthy coming out of its dormant season. Moving on, there are some banana trees as well, which I thought this one was dead, but I can see it's kind of growing back from the stump here. And it was about three feet tall prior to the winter storm. Also, this one over here was maybe six to seven feet tall and is likewise growing back from the stump, which really surprised me because bananas are tropical fruit and I would just expect that single digit temperatures would kill them, kill the roots and kill everything else, but there they are. Next up is this wispy skeleton of a lemon tree, which is left over following the winter storm. I'm not saying 100% that this tree is dead, but there are a couple of indicators that it is. One of which is that it hasn't dropped all of its leaves yet, and the other is that when I scratch on the base of the tree with a key or a knife, all I see underneath the bark is more brown and black, which is a pretty surefire sign. If you don't see green under the base of the trunk of the tree, it's probably dead. Similarly, these two tangerine trees here have not dropped their leaves either, or rather, they've dropped a lot, but they haven't dropped all of them. So you can see if I back up here, they, they still have a lot on the tree. And this is two months later, and when I scratch the base of one of these trees with a key, I can kind of see, again, just more wood, no green, just dry wood that it looks like you'd use for um, construction projects. I've really learned a lot from walking through Karen Jacob's backyard orchard. I think one of our takeaways is that citrus in Texas really ought to have some sort of winter covering. I was also really surprised just by the hardiness of this banana plant. And third, Texas varieties of peach trees are super hardy and a staple for any backyard orchard. Winter gardening can be super difficult, but it's really rewarding. It was really fun to see all of my fruit trees and vegetable beds go from being buried under eight inches of snow to thriving and putting out fruit and veggies. I hope my winter gardening tips are able to help fellow Texans through future gardening seasons. Thanks again for watching Austin, Texas Gardening.